Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to add new animals to Smart AI. Now I'm going to be doing this in Unreal Engine 5. If you're using Unreal Engine 4, I'll have a link in the description for that video. So before we get started, you're going to need a new animal to add. I'm going to be using the wolf from the animal variety pack that's actually free on the Unreal Marketplace, so I recommend you check that out. But you're going to need your character's skeleton and mesh as well. So to get started, we're going to create a new IK rig. So just right click and find the animations. Then under IK rig, we want the IK rig option here. So we'll select that. I'm going to select my wolf. So you can see I've got my wolf skeleton here. And we're just going to call this uh, target. And we'll go to our Smart AI folder. Then we're going to go to our meshes. And I'm just going to create another rig here. So we'll go to animation then to IK rig, IK rig, and then we want our deer. So we're going to select that and we're going to call this source like that. Then in our wolf folder, I'm just going to right click and I'm going to add in a new retargeter. So we'll select that and you see that we've got both our source and our target. We want to select our source, so we'll select that and we'll open up our retargeter. I'm just going to bring that over to this screen here like that. Now over here, we're just going to find the target IK rig asset. So we're going to set that to our target here like that. You should, should see we've got our wolf now in the screen. Now you might have some warnings. Don't worry about this because we're not actually retargeting any animations. We're just going to retarget our animation blueprint. We don't have to worry about dealing with chains or anything like that. So all we need to do is save, close this out. And now in our smart AI folder, we want to go to animations. We want to find our deer and MBP, right click it, and we're going to do retarget animation assets and duplicate and retarget animation blueprint like that. Select our retargeter that we just created and it's going to retarget our deer animation blueprint to our wolf skeleton. Now we're going to untick remap referenced assets, so just untick that there and hit retarget and give it a second. Now we'll create us a new animation blueprint that's going to be using our wolf skeleton instead of the deer skeleton. Now we're going to rename this just so we don't get confused. So I'm just going to rename this wolf. I recommend you do the same for yours. Next, we're going to need to make some changes inside this animation blueprint just so it works correctly with our new wolf character. So we'll open that up and I'll just bring that over to here and we'll compile first and we should get some errors. So we'll click this error first and it's going to take us to here. All we're going to do is select these nodes and remove them and connect this up to there like that. We'll compile and that should get rid of those errors. Then we'll head to the event graph and there's a few more bits we're going to remove. So this code up here, we're just going to highlight and delete that. We'll connect this up to the is valid pin there. Next, we're going to head over to our animals skeleton. So for me, that's going to be the wolf skeleton, but for you, that will be whatever animal you're using. So for me, that's going to be in the wolf folder meshes and I've got my wolf skeleton here. So I'm just going to open that up. And in here, we're going to find the head bone now, because this is a wolf and wolves bite, I'm going to be using the head bone to um, do the trace from for our melee attack. But if you were using something like um, a bear or some kind of monster and you wanted the traces to be done from, say, their hands, you would instead add the sockets to the hands. But for this, I'm just going to be doing it for the head. So I'm going to find the head bone quickly here. Oh, that's the hand bone. Um, we want the head. So here's the head. I'm going to right click it, add socket, and we're going to call it. If we right click and do, um, if we just double click a socket, you should be able to rename. We're going to call it melee trace underscore socket like that. And we'll just save this. Now we can move where this socket is. So I'm just going to select it. I'm going to move it more to where his mouth is. So sort of here. Um, I'm also going to rotate it in the Z axis. So uh, we'll rotate it 90 degrees. And this just is the direction that the trace will be done. So you can see in the relative rotation here in the Z, I've just set it to minus 90. That would just mean that the trace will come out forward from his mouth. Next, we're going to set up some blend spaces for our wolf to use. So we'll go to the content browser and I'm going to, in my wolf folder here, create a new blend space. So go to animation, then to blend space. And we need to select our wolf skeleton. And I'm going to call this BS underscore wolf underscore walk and we'll open this up 
And in here, I'm just going to be using one animation for this blend space. If you have multiple animations you want to use for moving side to side and backwards, you can do that. But for this, I'm just going to be using one animation for our whole blend space. And that's going to be the wolf uh, walk animation. So that for me is this one. If you're using a different character, this may be called something else. But I'm just going to drag mine in at the top here and then at the bottom and then on the two sides as well like this and here like that and we'll save this and now we're going to duplicate that and create a rom version so i'm going to right click do duplicate i'm just going to rename this to rom so uh, run and we'll open that up and i'm just going to be changing these from the walk versions to the rom ones so i'm just going to right click the dot on the graph here i'm going to search for wolf run and we want to find the top one here. So this is just called Wolf Run. I'm going to copy this search because we'll have to do this for the other ones. So we'll just select that, we'll right click this one, click the animation, paste in our search, scroll up to the top, set it to run, do the same for over here as well. Scroll up to the top, select that one, and then this one is the last one, like that. So you can see now that he's playing his run animation and that's set up for this blend space. And we can save that now. Next, we're gonna set up our wolf's attack animations. So for that, I'm gonna to go to the content browser. Now for me, this is gonna be a bite animation that comes with this wolf, but you might have some other animation that comes with your character. So you will wanna use those animations. So for me, I'm gonna to go to the animations folder here and I've got this wolf bite animation. I'm just gonna right click it, go to create, and we wanna create an anim montage like that. And we'll open that up. Now, the first thing we're going to do is change the montage slot. So you click this little slot button here, change the slot name to upper body. And your animation might freeze. Don't worry about that. I'm just going to stop it playing, move it to the side here. We'll save and we're just going to reopen this so our animation starts playing again. So we'll just open it back up. You can see it's playing again now. So the next part is going to be we're going to set up notifies that turn on and off our melee trace. And that's what detects if our character is actually hitting something. So you want this to be at like the start of your attack. So for me, it'll be around here. We'll right click on this notify bar here. We want to do add notify, new notify. And this is going to be called start melee detect. And you must spell it like this with the capital letters. Um, double check that you do have that set correctly. So that's when our trace will start running and our wolf will be able to damage things. And then we need one for when it ends as well. So for me, that'll be about here. And again, right click, add notify, new notify. And we'll call this one end melee detect. Oh, spelled that wrong. Detect, like that. Again, this must be spelled exactly like this with the capital letters. Otherwise, this won't work. So just hit enter. And now we've set up our melee uh, attack animation so that when the animation is between these two points here, the wolf will be able to deal damage to other things. Next, we need to go back to our wolf and MVP. If you don't know where that is, it's just in the content folder. So we need to just open that up. We're going to head over to the anim graph. And there's a couple of layered blend per bone nodes here. Now, these nodes are still using our deer bone names instead of our new wolf's bone names. So we're going to need to change these. So the first one here, if we select it under layer setup, just click through these drop downs. Uh, you can see it's currently set to neck base, but our wolf doesn't have a bone called neck base. So we need to find the equivalent of that bone on our wolf. So I'm going to go over to my wolf here and I'm going to find the neck. So neck base is probably going to be the equivalent of wolf neck here. So I'm going to use this bone's name. So uh, I'm just going to select it. And over here, we can actually just copy paste the name and go back to our anim BP. Now, this is going to need to be your animal's equivalent to the neck base bone. So just keep that in mind. For me, that's the wolf neck bone, but for you, it will be something else. Now, the next node here is actually set to head. If you select that, if these aren't dropped down, just open them up like we just did with this node. And you see that it's currently just set to head. So I need to find out, is uh, my wolf's um, head bone called head? And we can find that it's not. It's actually called wolf underscore dash head. So again, I'm just going to select the bone, copy the name from up here and we'll paste that into the name here. Again, this will be whatever your animal's head bone is called. It won't always be this bone name. 
Next, we're going to go to the event graph. So just double click that and we're going to find these two events here. So we've got activate melee detect and deactivate melee detect. We're just going to delete these and replace them. So I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to um, type in event start melee detect and we'll plug that into our branch here. We're going to delete this one and we're going to search for event end melee detect like that and just plug it in like that. So once you're done, it should look like this and we'll just compile and we can save this now. So now we've actually set up all of our animations and animation blueprints, we're ready to create our AI's blueprint. So for that, I'm going to head over to the Smart AI folder, then Blueprints, AI, AI Characters, Examples, Animals, and I'm going to just duplicate the AI Deer Aggressive. I recommend doing the same because it's just going to have some of the basic settings uh, already set up for you uh, for an animal. So I'm going to right click this and we're going to duplicate it. I'm going to call this BP underscore AI wolf like that. And we'll open this up. Um, we're just going to compile it quickly. Then we're going to go to our viewport. You can just double click any component to open it up. You can see that we've got our deer here. First, I'm going to select the deer mesh and we're going to change this to our wolf. So I'm just going to click the drop down here, find SK wolf, and we're just going to change it. And we're also going to delete our antlers. You can see we've got an antlers component. Our wolf doesn't have antlers, so I'm just going to delete those. And we've also got some extra collision um, capsules here. So we're just going to select both of these and delete those and you might want to move your animal depending on how big it is the deer is a lot bigger so i'm just gonna move mine so he's a bit more central to his capsule component here like that and we'll just compile next we need to change our animations in our ai component so we'll just select the ai component here and something i like to do is i like to go to the drop down here and do class all categories so that just closes everything for us and it just makes it a little bit easier to find things so we're going to go to general settings and then we've got our AI animations here. We're just gonna right click it and do collapse all again. And that's just gonna keep all of our animations collapsed so it's a little bit easier to work with. So to start with, we've got our default anims. Now these are the animations that our character will use unless these tick boxes are turned on for it to use uh, specific animations for a different behavior. So as an example, our wolf here will use um, default animations when in the search behavior or in the roam behavior, but if this character starts to flee, it will actually use the flee animations instead because we've got this tick box turned on. So we're going to start by changing our default anim. So I'm just going to click this uh, option down here. You can see we can change our idle. Currently they're all set to our deer's animations. So for me, I'm going to change this to our wolf's idle animations. Uh, if you're using your own character, you'll need an idle animation for it. So I'm just going to search for wolf idle and I'm going to use the idle breathe animation here. And then we've got our walk blend space. So currently it's set to deer, but I want to set this to the walk blend space that I created earlier. So I'm just going to search for walk and find the wolf walk like that. Now uh, you can set hit reactions. So these are animations that will play when your character gets hit. Um, I haven't set those up for our wolf, so I'm just going to uh, delete these. You can see that currently there's a deer animations here. I'm just going to remove this to make sure that our wolf doesn't try and play a deer animation. Now the cool thing about this is we can actually just close our default animants here, right click and do copy. And we're just gonna paste these onto each one of our uh, different behavior animations, just so we know that each one of them does have wolf animation set, even if we're not using them. Um, it's just helpful for later on in case you do decide to start using them. So we're just pasting these into each one of the anims here. Oh, I click copy there. I'll we'll just copy from default again. Paste that in, do the same for the rest of these animations like that. Now I'm actually going to turn off use combat stance because um, we don't really want that for an animal. So I'm just going to turn that off and we're going to change our melee attack anims. You can see that use melee attack anims is ticked on. That means that when our character is chasing down or doing melee attacks, these animations are going to be used instead of our default animations. So what I'm going to change here is I'm going to change my walk to our run one because I want my wolf to run once it's in like a combat scenario. So we'll change that to run. And I'm just going to compile this. Now, something to keep in mind is we've changed our animations, so they might not match up quite right with our character's movement speeds. So if you want to you change your movement speeds, we can just search for movement, uh, movement, like that. You can see that we've got our movement speeds for all of our different behaviors, and you can set those and change those here. 
Next, we need to change our melee attack animation. So we're just going to search for melee. And that's going to bring up our uh, melee attack. I'm just going to hide this category here. You can see down here, we've got our melee animations. And currently, it's set to our deer. But we want to change this to our wolf's attack. Uh, you can see that we've got two animations here. But I only set up one attack for our wolf. So I'm just going to remove this bottom one here. So now uh, this menu's opened again, but we'll close that. You can see that now we only have one. I'm going to change this animation to our wolf um, attack or our wolf bite animation. And we need to set the um, socket here to the same socket name that we added to our wolf. So if we go back to our wolf skeleton, if you remember, we added a melee trace socket. So I'm just going to copy this name, go back to our wolf uh, blueprint, and we're going to paste that name in here. And that just tells the system that we want our melee trace detection to use this socket that we added earlier. If you did want to add um, multiple attack animations, you can just click add element here. Um, we'll close this again. That's a kind of annoying bug. Um, you can see that it's added a new entry for us. We can add a new um, montage and you can add what socket you want it to use by just clicking this add element and you can set the socket name here. But I just have the one animation, so I'm going to remove this. And that's how we set up our melee attack animations. Now, if you want to change any more of melee settings, this is where you do it. You can change things like the melee distance, and this is how far the trace will go from the socket um, out forward to detect things to hit. Um, you can change multiple settings here. I have separate documentation um, on all of this that you can check out, but you can do things like controlling the damage values depending on what hitboxes are hit. Um, how fast it attacks, things like that. All of that can be found here. Now, there is uh, one other thing that we need to do in our animation blueprint. So we'll just compile and save our wolf here. And we're going to go back to our wolf and MVP. If you remember, that's in our um, content folder. So if you can't find it, it's just going to be here. Now, you can see our preview isn't actually running. It's just sort of frozen. So to get that running, um, you can go to the Smart AI Anims 1 here, which should open this up. And currently it's set to the deer animation, so I'm going to change this to our wolf uh, idle. Oh, spelling idle correctly. And I'm just going to set this to breathe, and we'll do the same for our wolf walk, like that. And we'll just do the same thing in uh, Smart AI Anims 2. Uh, so we'll set this to um, wolf idle, and we'll set the walk to uh, walk as well, wolf, like that. That just means that our uh, preview here will now be playing an animation as well. So we'll compile and save this. We do also want to set our anim class for our wolf. So we'll just head back to our wolf blueprint here a sec. Select our mesh. And I'm just going to get rid of this search. And we want to find the anim class. And we just want to set this to our wolf uh, anim BP that we just created. You can see that he's now playing the animations as well from our preview. So we'll compile that and save. And lastly, you might have some death animations that you want to use for your animal instead of using Ragdoll. To use those, just select the AI component here, search for death. You can see that we've got an array of death animations that you can just add to. And these are just normal animations that you can set. Obviously, they need to be animations that your wolf can play. And uh, you need to untick Ragdoll on death. If this is ticked on, then the death animations won't be used. One other setting you might want to adjust depending on the size of your animal is the acceptable radius. So if we just search for acceptable, you can see that we can set a different value for each behavior. And this is basically how close the AI will try to get to their target, say if they're attacking something or moving to it. This can be helpful if you have a large animal, uh, you might want to increase these values. But these default values should be fine for our wolf and for most characters anyway. So we're actually ready to test this out now. So we're going to head over to our showcase and we're going to drag in a wolf. So I'm just going to go to the Smart AI folder, Blueprints, AI, AI characters, examples, then to the animals. We'll drag in our wolf here. I'm just going to rotate it to face where our character will be. And uh, we can hit play. You can see that our wolf is seeing us. He's running over and he's actually playing his attack animations as well. He's reducing our health and everything is working as it should be. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you guys found it useful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below.